Illinois High School Association proudly presents another championship event. Your network hosts are the Stauffer Chemical Company, Country Companies Insurance, and the nearly 1,000 Country Companies agents in the state of Illinois, and DeKalb Ag Research, and the more than 750 local DeKalb dealers supplying Illinois farmers with quality hybrid seed. Welcome to the 1981 Illinois High School Association Girls AA Volleyball Tournament. We're here at the Prairie Convention Capital Center here in Springfield, Illinois. I'm Ann Penstone. With me is Bonnie Beach. We're here to bring you tonight's championship AA match featuring Carl Sandberg of Orland Park and defending champion Mother McCauley of Chicago. Bonnie, probably no coach in Illinois is any more familiar with either of these two teams than this lady that we're bringing in right now. This is Roylene Tipton of Maine West. She had the first quarterfinal match at this tournament. Roylene, before you start, I'd just like to say that the word awesome has been applied to Therese Boyle and a lot of the players. I think your coaching job against Mother McCauley, your first round, was absolutely awesome. It was brilliant. Tell us what you did and how you did it, what you felt you needed to do against McCauley, and what we can expect to see as the teams play. Well, first of all, thank you very much, Bonnie. Coming from you, that means a great deal to me. The first thing that you have to do in preparing to play Macaulay is to prepare your team mentally to, pray, to play them. When you come into a match, you know, pray maybe too, mostly play. When you come into a match against a team that's undefeated for two years, you first of all have to convince that team that they belong on the court. We had the uh, fortune of playing Macaulay twice this year. Each time we played them, we got a little bit stronger, and we did come down here really believing that we had a chance to beat them. And I think we went out there on the court and played like that, and I think that really made the difference. I don't think a team can go out the first time against a team with the experience of Macaulay and have a chance. You stand in awe of the team. They are awesome. It takes some time, and you finally get the idea of how to do it. Raylene, what specifically do you think that a team needs to do with Macaulay in order to even have a fighting chance? A team has to have a variety of attack. If you have anything that you do consistently, McCauley will pick it up and play good defense against it. Um, we tried to establish a line attack, trying to get away from Teresa, played middle most of the time in the match against us. We knew we had to establish on the line. We were trying to get our sets low out to the side out there to keep the middle blocker away, and we felt that was effective. You also have to pass the ball very well against McCauley, and that, that, is right just a that, that is just absolutely key with them, yes. That's true. You've also seen Sandberg during the year. What, what kinds of things can we expect to see from Sandberg that might be effective or might be really outstanding for them? Well, Sandberg has uh, one very outstanding player in Julie Maginot, and I think she will match up very well with Teresa Boyle. Uh, Sandberg has a good, solid attack. They have a good variety of attack. They attack from all three positions on the net, so McCauley will not be able to key in on them as they perhaps might against some other teams. Um, I think that Sandberg will provide us with a good match. Thank you, Rolene, very much. Rolene, Bonnie, thank you. We're going to be in for exciting basketball here at the AA, and we'll be back with the starting lineups right after this message from Country Companies Insurance. Welcome back to Springfield, capital of Illinois, and for day, the Center for Illinois High School Association AA Girls Va Volleyball. We're about to bring you the 8th Illinois High School Association AA Girls Volleyball Championship game featuring defending champion Mother McCauley of Chicago and Carl Sandberg of Orland Park. Mother McCauley got to this championship game by beating Maine West in a fantastic three-game match in the quarterfinals, then beat Glenbard West in two games in the semis. Sandberg got here by beating a previously undefeated Belleville Altoff and then beating Morton in the semifinals. With me is Bonnie Beach, of course, and Bonnie, exactly what can we expect to be determining factors in this game? Well, I think one of the determining factors in the game is, is just the entire Macaulay team. They're a fantastic team. They're one of the best high school teams I have ever seen. Sandberg is also an excellent high school team. Should be. And now with tonight's starting lineups is Julie Boltz. And now meet the players who will compete in this session's second match. For the visiting Eagles of Carl Sandberg, who entered the match with a record of 31 wins and 7 losses, please meet Coach Joanne Mutt. Coach Mutt has a career record of 109 wins and 28 losses for a career of 5 years. The non-starting players for the Eagles are number 5, Nikki Cook. 
Number seven, Judy Effie. Number nine, Chris Mitchell. Number 10, Cheryl Sixta. Number 12, Athena Callahan. Number 15, Mary Lou Abolio. The start starting lineup for Carl Sandberg is number four, Patty Zumachek. Number six, Kathy Jacoby. Number 14, Candy Thayer. The captain for the Eagles, number one, Julie Magino. Number eight, Ann Ketrovskis. And number three, Rita Schwartz. Look for Magino and Thayer to hit. For the home team, the mighty Max of Mother McCauley. McCauley has a tremendous crowd here this evening. <laughs> They marched in in line. And no losses. Please meet Coach Mary Ann Malone. McCauley's got to have the best record of any team Coach ever Malone to appear. Coach has a career record of 107 wins and one loss for a career of three years. Unbelievable coaching record for three years. <laughs> Non-starting players for the Mighty Max are number one, Eva Murray. Number two, Kathy Burns. Number three, Andrea Delaney. Mother McCauley players are giving their coach each a rose. For Number eight, That's Sheila really a nice touch. Number 10, Lori Carraher. And number 12, Jean Rowan. It's great to see the caring that develops between coaches and teams here. Yes. The starting lineup for Mother McCauley is number 15, Deirdre Connolly. Number 13, Maura Cullen. Captain for the Mighty Max, number 11, Sharon Kuchum. She's really number done five, a great job. Therese Boyle. There she is. Oh. Thunder Boyle, probably the number premier high school player in the country. Colleen Dalton. And number seven, Ann Nilan. The floor officials for this match are Lynette Trout from Champaign, who will serve as referee, and Ann Finneran from Lake Forest, who will serve as umpire. We back what we expect to be a tremendous championship match right after this message from DeKalb Ag Research. We're back at the Perry Capital Convention Center, ready to bring you the first game of this double-A championship match between Carl Sandberg and defending champ Mother McCauley. Carl Sandberg won the toss, will serve first, and they'll begin with Patty Zumerchik. And we should have a tremendous match this evening. No team really has been able to run very well with McCauley. Maine West probably gave him their closest match. It'll be interesting to see Sandberg. Of course, that's the only time that Mother McCauley has even lost a game this year, much less a match. It was a beautiful match. Again, that showed their poise. Even though they lost, they came back and won, and they have played considerably better since then. Yes, they have. Zoomer check to serve. Go to Boyle for the first ball. Ball is in play, and that's all we can expect right away. It's a good dig. Ball coming to the front court. One of the things that we'll see from Boyle is it shall hit from anywhere in any position. There's her counterpart, Magino there we go. Sandberg. Julie Magino, and they call Julie Magic. <laughs> and she is that. She grew up with these kids and actually could have been playing a Mother McCauley, but for a move by the family. They make very good opponents. Nice double block. We have a call of four hits, and Boyle went up and hit the ball into the net. There was no contact by the blocker, and then the ball was dug by McCauley, and that was the fourth hit. Good pick up. Kuchin has been an excellent server. That was Nalen. Good pick up on the spike. And they've given McCauley a free ball to work with. Nice back set oh. and a dink. Jacobi. It's handled well. They've given McCauley another free ball to work with. 
Short Two set, in the, set in the middle. Oh. Both teams are working very, very well. Oh. oh. Really nice dink by Therese Boyle down the line, right in between the digger and the blockers. Side act from Mother McCauley. You see in the replay now, middle hitter coming in and hitting that two set in the middle right on target. A nice, nice dink on the part of Sandberg's Kathy Jacoby. The dink went right down the line. It was fast enough so that McCauley didn't even have a chance to get the block in position. And Jacoby has been a key for them. She's played well, Sandberg has played well. Yes, she's been very strong. She's a very complimentary player to the rest of the team. It's a nice pass. Oh, oh now that's something <laughs> new that we haven't seen. We get Colleen Dalton set in the left back position. McCauley normally will set Therese Boyle when she's in the left back position. She hits very well from there. We've not seen Colleen being set from that position. No, but in the semifinals, we did see them set Deidre Connolly in that same play. Yes, we did. But they're showing a lot more versatility this evening. They're shot to prove what they've been doing for so many years. It's a nice up ball. Good block. Good block by Sharon Kuchin and Therese Boyle right there for an ace. This is Mara Cullen serving. She's the only junior on the starting squad. Showed a little tournament jitters in the quarterfinal game, but she, since then she's got her composure back. She did, but she's played really well. Oh, that's a real mental lapse on the part of the players on McCauley. Um, the ball was mispassed badly on Sandberg's part, came right over the net between Colleen Dalton and her teammate, and they just let it fall on the floor. It's Candy Thayer to serve for Sandberg. They're up two to, net, two to one at side out. That's four successive turnovers on service. That's, that's got to hurt them. Got to be able to serve and put the ball in. Here we get substitution coming in for Mighty Max. This will be a, a typical substitution for them. They bring Andrea Delaney to play the front row, and Colleen Dalton just plays the back. Therese Boyle to serve. I can't believe this. Five service errors in a row or, or side outs. That was Sharon Kuchin serving. And that's unusual for her. She's not made very many service errors. Beautiful pass. Had a one set in the middle. Ball is handled well by Sandberg. Oh. Nice defense. Excuse me, nice attack. Defense was a little bit short on that one. Service by Maginot. Good up ball, nice high set. Oh. Katuri Spoil, it's a high set, right, front right the in the back. middle. Boyle is going to be a big factor, and they've got to keep her contained at the net. She's an awesome hitter. They know each other well, and sometimes that's a detriment. Right there, you might explain exactly what a double hit is in that situation. Well, we usually get two kinds of illegal hits on serve reception. One, that the ball bounces from the forearm to the upper arm. One, that it rolls. And it's hard to tell exactly what the officials are seeing. Nice hit by Zumerchik. Ball is handled well by McCauley. And the ball is hit by Deirdre Connolly for an ace. Double block went up, but the ball went off the box. And we've got a tie score now. Come back with Boyle serving. She may be one of the premier servers as well as everything else. Oh, she can do it all. The pick up by Candy Thayer. Oh, nice set by Maginot. That's Rita Schwartz, probably their second best hitter. Yes, yeah, she probably is. Their setter may actually hit harder than any of the rest of their players, but that gives her versatility and the complexity of their offense. Now we have another service error on the part of Sandberg. That's really going to hurt them in the long run if they can't generate at least a point or two each time they get the ball. Ann Nalen to serve. I'm sorry. That's Andrew Delaney. Good hit. Nice defense. Pass him right up to the net to the setter. Illegal hit will be side out. Jacoby amazes me. She's five foot five, but she has tremendous vertical jump. She really does. She's done a super job. Get the substitution that we're going to see throughout the match here for Ma Mother McCauley. 27, Colleen Dalton comes in and plays the back row, and Andrew Delaney goes out when she's in that position. She plays just the front row for them. She's a better hitter. That's a nice combination of players. They, they seem to move in and out of the lineup with no problem and momentum at all. Rita Sir Schwartz to serve for Carl Sandberg. Oh, nice, nice serve. serve. Good pickup by Deidre Connolly. 
Nice save by Maginot. Excellent. Seeing some nice points played out here. Nice set by Zumerchik to Thayer in the middle. We have a triple block. Macaulay typically will triple block in the middle. We got a net violation. We had on one of the Macaulay block. players in the net on the block. And you can see on the replay now that as Thayer comes in, the triple block gathers in the front court. And up they go. They got nice contact on the ball, but one of their players hit the net on the way down. We have a side out on that serve by Rita Schwartz. We'll have other Macaulay serving, and that's Ann Nalen. Set by Maginot. Nice get Kobe. by Maginot. Oh. Good pass up to the setter. Zumerchik out of the right position. Halen on the set here. McCauley. Oh. Unable to pick up that spike attempt. In right. This. It was really a nice spike by Deirdre Connolly, and we also had or saw a good fake in the middle by Maura Cullen. Really took the blockers out of the play. It's really it's bad pass, but a nice play on the part of Sandberg. That was Kaczorowski oh. that made that first save. There we go. We just saw Ann Nalen dump the ball into the court on the second hit. Caught Sandberg totally unaware. When you have a defensive player, we have to make such a save and people out of position. You often get that smart dink by the other team quickly. Yes, you do, especially from a team like McCauley, who just has very nice court sense and sees the holes in the court. Zimmer check on the hit. No problem on the reception. Oh, Nancy Kuchin. Nancy Kuchin is really a very beautiful setter, but she's also done some nice hitting at the net. They've used her uh, on the right side a lot, and she's been very effective over there. Of course, they do play a 6-2, which means all players often do hit, although they do have two designated sets. That's right. Oh, good play there by Maura hey. Cullen. And a nice block up the net by Maura Cullen as the ball was almost passed over. we're going to get a timeout with Carl Sandberg, with Macaulay leading 8-4, to four, and one of your network sponsors is Stauffer Chemical Company. Mother McCullough was down four to three, but they've come back and they now have an eight to four lead. That's why Carl Sandberg called that timeout. Coaches have been very good about calling timeouts at crucial moments and been successful with the results this tournament. Yes, they really have. And what you want to happen is to be able to cause a service error to get the ball back right away. They got a good reception. That's something they haven't done really in the last nice. couple. Ball to Candy Thayer. Nice hit through the block. Good defense. Nice save by Patty Zumerchik. Oh, and then Jacoby uh, knocked it out of bounds. It's too bad. The thing I love about volleyball is everybody congratulates each other right after a point, no matter what happens. Well, we congratulations or cons consolation, <laughs> just to let you know they're there. It's a definite team game. Nice pass. Zoomer chick to Thayer. Thayer with a dink. Macaulay had it covered right away. Oh, yes. Oh. See, the entire Macaulay team was really kind of gathered in that left forward position. And put the ball into an opening there. Zumercheck took good advantage of that opening and, and hit it right off of the His smart hit. player. Nice serve. Oh. Kind of an illegal hit called off the block on that. Um, might have been several. Okay, we might have had several contacts. The ball was kind of trapped between the net and the players. That hit was by Maginot, who has tremendous power as well. She really does. A little communication question there. Set by Zoomer, check, and Jacoby nice on the right. Nice back set. Nice up by Therese Boyle. Oh, no one can get to nice it. attempt at a save. You know, Therese Boyle is definitely a, a tremendous power hitter, and she's really a very good hitter. But Julie Maginot probably has one of the fastest arm swings of any of the high school players that we've seen. She just generates a lot of speed. She's not very big, but she has tremendous power. She really does. There's that set to Boyle in the backcourt. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, it really is. The set, usually when Therese gets set in the backcourt, it's set much closer to the 10-foot line. That was set at about midcourt, and she had to reach behind her head for the ball and, and knock it out of bounds. That is a set play, however, to set her at the left back position. Sure is. Back set. Good block. Yeah. Oh, no. Candy nice Thayer. block on Deirdre Connolly. Candy Thayer is, has been kind of playing erratically. Watch it coming up on the replay here. 
Connolly up, and Candy has just really reached forward for the ball. Nice ace block. Snap forward on the ball to bring it down, right. too. Right. It's a good pass. Oh, oh. Nice. Moore Cullen really hit Sandberg right in the middle of the court, right into an open space. Nobody could get to the ball. It wasn't even that hard. Sometimes an off speed shot will do that for you. Connolly does serve. Oh, you can't do that with Therese Boyle at the net. You can't do that with Boyle at the net. She not only has a good vertical jump, but she reaches over the net so well. The perception of volleyball players has to be tremendous to know whether to go up or whether to stay where you are and whether it's going to come over. It really right? does. That's a fast decision you have to make. It's a dink down the line that was picked up very well by Colleen Dalton. Now, Bonnie, Carl Sandberg is playing what we would probably call a man-back defense, correct? Where That's right. There's no one directly behind the two blockers. That's correct. But they've had trouble both off the hard hits, not being able to pick them up, or the dink. Right. Should they come up perhaps a step or so? Um, I don't think so. I think if they come up any more than that, they're really going to sacrifice in their backcourt. Imagine how expected uh, there to be able to drop back and pick that up. Yeah, she did. It's difficult. We've got Sandberg with a timeout. They all of a sudden they were coming back. It was eight to four when we came back from the last time out. And then all of a sudden, nine to eight with Sandra coming back. And all of a sudden now it's 12 again. Macaulay just keeps eating away at people. They really do. And they, they do it in, in kind of a spectacular fashion. They don't like to play behind and they, they haven't played behind too terribly many teams. And once they get out and take the lead, they just kind of take huge chunks of points, three and four at a time. And it makes it very difficult for a team to come back against them. I know they like to come out in the very first game of the match and basically be devastating and overpower you and, and make you come back at them, which is very difficult at that point. They really do. We've seen something happen at the tournament, which is kind of interesting. Macaulay played both Friday morning and, and another morning match, and when they play it early in the morning, they're not very quick at all. They come out rather slow, kind of sleepily, but when they played the first match against Maine West, and well, as they were playing, they really got scared. And it, they played a little bit better, but this is an evening match, and they are quick and they are awesome. There's very little emotion on their part after that match. It was as if they, they knew that they had not performed well and, and rather surprised themselves, I think, not so much at the closest of the match because they respected Maine West, but rather the fact that they could not do what they wanted to That's do. right. Deidre Connolly to serve the score 12 for Mother McCauley and 8 for Carl Sandberg. That puts Boy at the left front position, her strongest. Now, oh, both Carl Sandberg go. timeouts have been effective. They've done That's just what right. you wanted. That's right. Connolly served out of bounds. Kathy Jacoby to serve, the littlest player on the Sandberg starting lineup. Set to Boyle. The nice oh. dig. Right back up in the net, and Maura Cullen was right there. Hit the ball for a quick hit right down in the center of the court. Just a junior, she had a, a terrible time with serve reception the first match against Maine West, and she's gotten steadily better and more confident. She really has. She's played very well. What a oh. nice save by Patty Zumerchik. That's really too bad. Julie Maginot went for the ball and really couldn't do much with it. But it was a beautiful jump at the net by Zumerchik to try and, and save the ball. Illegal serve will be side out to Sandberg, and we're going to get a substitution. Judy Athey will be coming in for Candy Thayer. This is not a constant substitution, but oftentimes they need good defense in the backcourt. They do bring in Athey in the back row for Thayer. It's not as quick. Yes. I think that, that Candy has been very, very good in the tournament, and then she's kind of had some flat spots, and so this probably helps her also. They need her at the net, and they need her to be as sharp as possible there. And Judy Athley will come right in to serve. No problem there. Nice pass. Good fake in the middle with Therese Boyle running on the outside with an X. Oh, Maginot. Oh, that was oh. really nice. Maginot was on a wide outside approach, and she just really hit the ball down the line slightly inside and found a spot where no one was. Would you expect Carl Sandberg to set Maginot a little bit more to get the power and perhaps yeah, the kills really that we Pass problem by Connolly, saved by Maura Cullen. Whoops. Zumercheck went up to set. She did make contact with the net. That'll be a net foul and side out to, net, to Mother McCauley. 
too bad we didn't get to see Mother McCullough receive again because they were running what they call their overload serve reception. It's, it's a kind of strange looking <laughs> serve receive to get the setter into the net. It's very effective for them. Oh, imagine that. Good block. We've got Boyle hitting on the outside now. Really, that's one of the things that McCauley really likes to establish is Boyle on a high outside set on the left, and she also hits a two set, which is a little bit shorter on the outside right, and then a one, which is a very short set in the middle. But that's how she gets established is with that high outside set on the left side. Possible game point here. Set by nice Zimmerchek. Set for Zimmerchek. Pick up by, oh, I mean, a little confusion at the net there. They've reorganized. Problem on the set. Oh. Well, they go ahead. Yeah, it's too bad. Point and game to Mother McCauley. 15, Mother McCauley, nine for Carl Sandberg. Did that game go pretty much as you expected, Bonnie? Yes, I think it did. Um, I think Sandberg to stay with McCauley now, they're going to have to play much tougher on defense. They're going to have to get a little bit more blocking contact in the net, and I really think they're going to have to get the ball to Maginot more. Bonnie, we'll, we'll be back with one of your network sponsors is Country Companies Insurance. The awesome power of Mother Macaulay was shown in this first match of first game of the double-A championship game. They won the first game 15 to nine. Sandberg pretty much could not do what they would like to have done and Boyle was the name of the game. She really was and she has been the, the factor in every single one of the games that they've played. One thing that we ought to mention is this is Boyle's first tournament appearance. Um, last year she was very, very sick and she didn't get to play in the championship match and I'm sure that this means a great deal to her to be able to play this evening. She is a senior and I'm sure the fans are very glad they get to see her too. She's just not only is she tremendous here in the state of Illinois, but many people consider her to be possibly the premier player in the country for her age. She is on the U.S. national team. I think all you have to do is watch her play to know that, that that's not an undeserved accolade for her. She really, she can do it all. She can hit, she can block, hit from anywhere in the court. Perhaps one of her greatest attributes is the ability to function under all situations. She apparently gives no emotion on the court. She's just she's not a very emotional player at all, but if you look at Mother McCauley as a team, they're not a very emotional team either. They don't get sh shaken up, and they don't get overly emotional by something that works really well for them. They're very consistent. Sandberg, of course, is a highly talented team, too, and both these teams play open ball in the summers and the rest of the year, which counts for the tremendous talent. In fact, Candy Thayer, Rita Schwartz, and Julie Maginot play with the Macaulay girls the rest of the year. What a dominating team. Boy, <laughs> isn't it? They know one another well and, and know what to expect from one another. Of course, these, the Mother Macaulay girls, are they run 12 different plays, and part of their ability to be, have run that complex of an offense is the fact that they have been playing together since fifth grade really helps that you know one another very well. Deirdre Connolly serving for Mother McCauley, second game. First ball is hit out of bounds by Kathy Jacoby. That's rare for Jacoby. She's hit two of them out of bounds. I think maybe a little extra adrenaline that's pumping her deep. Sure could be. It's a nice pass up to Zumerchik. Ball to Maginot. Now Maginot has hit the ball out of bounds. I just can't help but think that Sandberg right now has got to be playing really tight. It's almost as if they can see the writing on the wall. And they've got to settle down and relax. They were expected to be here, but they did have a tough time with that undefeated Belleville Altoff team. Yes, they did. That's a third spike attempt hit out of bounds by Sandberg. That's not how you want to start the second game. No, it really isn't. And I think both teams are capable of being very patient. And I think at this point, Sandberg can't play for the kill. They've got to play to keep the ball under control. a nice hit by Jacoby, but she hit right into a block and they weren't able to pick the ball up out of the net and, and do anything with it. They're down 4-0 and they've really got to start moving. Nice serve by Connolly. Zimercheck comes up with a bump set to Maginot. There we go. Uh -huh. And Maginot was right on target. Zimercheck really is a beautiful setter. She's just really run the team very well. She gets into position. You can see that she's a, a tremendous hustler. She'll be serving now. She covers very well and gets in position wherever the set may be, but, or the pass may be, but thank goodness they have pretty good passes most of the time. Right. Problem on a pass there by Boyle. Oh, oh. It's a really high pass. Sometimes the really high passes are difficult to handle, 
and it just kind of bounced back and forth from Jacoby's hands and fell to the floor. We'll get a side off with Maura Cullen to serve. Again, the only junior on the Mother Macaulay team, so she'll be back next year. Nice, nice serve. An ace serve. Served the ball, the ball dropped very fast after it got over the net. There wasn't sure whether she was supposed to pass it, and consequently it hit at the shoe tops of the back row players. It's a nice pass up to Zumerchik. Zumerchik to oh. Thayer. That's probably one of the best hits that Thayer has had all tournament long. Set was beautiful, and she was right in on there. They threw a triple block on her in the middle, and she just hit the ball right down behind the 10-foot line. She has tremendous power. She's having difficulty with the timing throughout the tournament. Good pass by Boyle, set by Naylin. Nice pick up by Jacoby, a good defensive player. But she's slow getting up. Now we had a football by somebody on the Sandberg team. And we're going to get that substitution that we usually get with Mother Macaulay. Hey, we can see there's a nice save there. Ball up by Thayer. It's like Magino was the one that stepped yes, across the line. I think it was. I think it was. It's too bad because the save was a nice save, and you've really got to be able to put those back over the net. Mother Macaulay brought in Andrew Delaney for the, for the front row, and Colleen Dalton goes out. Oh. Kaczorowski attempted the, the spike. It was blocked back, and no Sandberg player was able to keep it in yeah. balance. They had the defense there, but the, the ball wasn't really tracked by any of the players as it came off the black. Reaction time is so important for a volleyball oh, there. It's essential. Oh, and that foul on that triple Mianko. ball. And that was a nice play by Magino. She also has a nice command of the net. She can go up in the air and see what's happening. Looked like she was going to hit and saw that triple block was right there in front of her, and so she just pushed the ball for a dink or a tip right over the block. Coach Joanne Much just brought in Judy Athey again for Candy Thayer, and Athey, the last time she came in, served four straight points. Let's see if she can continue Let's with see that. see if she can do Pat that again. Nice pass, handled well. Oh. Oh. Well, I wanted to explain the types of sets that are used. Well, we have a high outside set, and that's probably the easiest set to hit because it gives the hitter a lot of time to get under it. We have a two set, which Macaulay uses a two set in the back or the right position a lot of times, and that's about two feet high up off the net. And then they also have a one set that's hit. It's very spectacular when you see it. It's a very short set, and it goes down directly right. off the spike. On the one set, the hitter hits it while the ball is still going up out of the, the setter's hands. Boyle service is out of bounds, and now we have Maginot serving. There we have a one set in the middle. Left-handed hit by Kumacek. Off-balance hit. Had Ann Nalen was kind of out of position there. She hit that one set in the middle and then came out to the right side, and she was backing off the net when she was set again. It's really off-balance. Imagino continue with down 6-1. to one. Nice cross-court set. Hit by Connelly. Nice save by Maginot. Oh. Good dig. Kaczorowski hasn't been able to get anything down. Good. Oh, comeback by Boyle. Nice save. Oh. And the ball is passed over the net and out of bounds. It looks so easy when you go by. You think if you've gotten it up that high that it should be easy enough to hit it over in the third hit, but that's a long yeah. way for a bump. It is a long way. That was a nice hit by Kaczorowski. It went down the line and into the backcourt, and that's one of the things you have to do. Now we have a call by the official. Setter for McCauley tried to dump the ball over the net on the second hit, and it's a real, it's a real touchy thing to do with, with officials. So much judgment in officiating in volleyball. It's a tremendous amount, and I think they really do a nice job. The lines people are somebody else. They have donated their time here at the tournament, and I think it's the first time adults have ever done it or certified officials. And they've done it just an unbelievable oh, job. They've the been super. There just have been no question about lines or touches at all. Oh, all right. Rita Schwartz right up on the net. Ball was miscast by McCauley, and Rita Schwartz just jumped up, nailed the ball. Let's take a look at this on the replay. Ball is served. It's a mispass by the McCauley players. The ball goes right up over the net. And Rita Schwartz is just right there and nails the ball. McCauley didn't even have a chance to set up. One of your network sponsors is DeKalb Ag Research. After down six to nothing behind the serving of Julie Maginot, Sandberg's come roaring back, and it's now six to five with Maginot still serving. They, re oh, they really have, except that's a side out now, McCauley just dumped the ball right over the block. Nice dink. Comes Colleen right down Dalton. the line. Comes Colleen Dalton back in. And she'll replace 
In the normal rotation, Andrea Delaney. Service by Colleen Dalton. She immediately goes up left rack position, play defense. Beautiful set by Magino and Zumerchik with a nice hit on the outside. Oh, nice dig. Going to get a free ball, but they're lucky to get that ball over the net again. Dalton up on the set. Two set in the middle. Oh, it's too bad we had an illegal hit. We had a double hit, the ball went off of the, the forearms of Ann Nalen and then up into her face. Sandberg has to make sure that they don't let McCauley get a run of points here. That's what's been happening. They really do. They've got to play close to them all the time. Come roaring back only to have McCauley come back with a, a string of points. Oh, <laughs> held ball. Okay, Rita Schwartz went up to hit the ball. We had two blockers for McCauley, and the ball got trapped between the blockers and the hitters, so no point on that, and we'll have a replay. So Colleen Dalton to serve again. Good serve. Pick up by... Nice pass. Nice out. Oh, oh. beautiful. A nice outside set on the part of Maginot. She's a beautiful setter, and then Zumerchik coming in, and she really hit the ball down the line, which is one of the places that McCauley has had a hard time defensing. Zan Kaczorowski to serve. Sandberg. Oh. Oh. Too bad. Very tough. Just must have nicked the net. Must have nicked the net. It was a beautiful serve. Now the referee is Lynette Trout this evening. Puts her hand on the net so she can feel that because you can't right. always see it. You can't always see it. You sure couldn't see it from up here, but you you can feel it. And Nalen to serve. Good set by Maginot. Oh, Schwartz. Schwartz. Ball was out. So that'll be point to Mother McCauley. They're Schwartz. leading eight to five. Schwartz is trying to take that ball right down the line. Oh, what a nice dig. save. Oh. If Deirdre Connolly, now she hit the ball, the ball hit into the net and kicked up off the net and really kind of um, fooled Sandberg on the timing of the dig. We'll be back after a message from Stauffer Chemical Company. The Mighty Max have been nothing but awesome. They're serving in the second game, nine to five, but that time out again by Carl Sandberg did just exactly what it was supposed to do, and they're gonna get the ball. I don't think I've ever seen timeouts be quite <laughs> so successful. We really have gotten about 95% of the timeouts that have um, caused the serving team to make some kind of a service error. Just what intelligent coaches that we I have know. here at State Tournament. <laughs> that's why they're here. Bright, thoughtful. Right. And that's why you've been here as State Championship coach yourself. It's a long time ago. Don't Rita Schwartz it. serving. Now we had an illegal hit called on the Mother Macaulay setter, Ann Nalen, and Ann really took the ball down by her chest rather than up off of her head and probably held the ball a little bit too long. Oh, service critical error. service error, critical service error. Deidre Connolly to serve. They're back in the original service rotation from the start of the game puts Boyle up at the left front position. Oh, <laughs> nice. That was nice set. Magino turned to her right, which is very unusual for a setter to do. She turned to her right and set Zumerchik right there and went down the line with the ball and, and beat the block. Quickness of Boyle was so incredible. She hit it with the shoulder and then turned around and got it with her elbow too. She actually had a double hit. Nice pickup by Connolly off the spike by Thayer. Boyle on the left front. <laughs> you don't return those. No, you really don't. The thing about Therese Boyle is is that she's so quick. Like she was up and hitting the ball when Sandberg's block was still forming and, and trying to get up to do something to contain her. So much of the spike is the timing and getting to the set, is it not? It really is. Good nice save. save by Zumerchik. She has just been <laughs> outstanding. Just a little tip Man. by Therese. Oh, no. oh, yes. One tip deserves another. <laughs> Went right down the line with Kathy Jacoby. It was really nice. Right over the block, there wasn't anyone there. All started by that save by Zumercheck in the net and kept her position That's without hitting right. it. Short serve, nice a good serve. pickup by Connolly. Oh. Excellent reaction on the part of Therese Boyle. Oh, That's yes. Then we get Candy Thayer, and she did the same thing. We get a double block in the middle on the part of McCauley. 
Candy goes up in the air. She looks at what, what's there and just absolutely tips the ball right over the block and puts it down behind the blockers. Now, Sandberg's been able to come back before, but they haven't been able to sustain that drive. No, they haven't. They've done a, a much better job in the second game. There's that push by the setter on the second hit. Tried it for a third time. No good on that one. Okay, so we'll do it back, says McCarthy. All right, nice save by Magino. Oh, that was beautiful. He Rita Schwartz. Ball, but they were lucky to have the ball at all. Oh. Uh, Therese Boyle in the middle. Just absolutely awesome. She hit the ball, and Kathy Jacoby wasn't able to dig the ball back up. Somehow it doesn't seem fair to make that nice a defensive play and not be able to complete it with the offensive point. Really, it doesn't. It's very critical on Sandberg's part, though, to be able to do something with the ball that Maginot saved, get the ball back over the net, and they did that. It would have been much worse for them had they not been able to get the ball back over the net. Andrew Delaney back in the McCauley lineup. She's coming in the front row position for Colleen Dalton, who goes out. Kuchin on the serve. Maginot out of the middle. Oh, nice set by Zumerchik. Therese Boyle has used that play about four or five times very successfully. She goes up in the air, she looks like she's going to hit the ball, and then just takes it right down the line. Defense isn't able to get to it. It's right over the block, dink for a point. Spiker's ability to do that really depends on their ability to hit hard to make it a deceptive move. That's right. You've got to believe she's going to hit it. Not sure who that set was for. I don't know who the set was for. There is a play called a tandem where one player hits behind another, but that wasn't it. Joanne Much had to call a much needed timeout here. They're down 11 to 7, the second game of this double eight game. Every time she's called one so far, they've been able to come right back up and maintain and come back with some points against Mother McCauley. And they're going to have to do it right now because there are only four points left in this game from McCauley's point of view. They really have to do that. But the thing is, they've been able to come back. Sandberg has come back a little bit, but they've really not played close enough with McCauley to keep breathing down their neck, so to speak. They've not really been able to put a lot of pressure on. It's tough to know how McCauley would react with pressure since no one's ever really been able to put it on them until the first quarterfinal match of this tournament when Maine West just played a phenomenal match against McCauley. They really did. Maine West beat them. I believe the score was 12-15 in the first game. I really have to believe that Maine West is probably close to being the second best team at the tournament. They just, they did an outstanding job. They revised some of the plays that they were working. They revised some of the blocking assignments. Um, their game plan was to go down the line and hit McCauley in the deep back of the court. And really, that's the only team that's been successful in doing that against McCauley. And they just played absolutely beautifully. There's so much intelligence for the coaches in this tournament and all throughout the state that so many people know what needs to be done, but so difficult to find the people to execute it. And Roiling tipped and had the foresight to discover what could be done and also had the players and personnel to be able to execute She that. really did. It was a brilliant job of coaching and an excellent job of execution. It's Kuchin serve. serving. That Kaczorowski. Yes. Oh, good. Oh. Yes. Kaczorowski, it was a nice hit. It was almost behind her head, and she took the ball, put it right in between the angle digger and the off blocker. Again, right we'll get the court. defensive substitution with Athy coming in for Candy Thayer in the back row. Off of that nice hit for Sandberg. And Athy also has been a tremendous server for them. Every time she's come in, she served at least two points. Yes, she's done very well. Oh, oh, nice block, nice block. Two successive things by Kaczorowski. First they hit that cross court on the side, and then the dink over the net. That's right, and you watch Kaczorowski, she's right there by herself, and she just barely gets a piece of the ball. The ball was mishit in the first place and does a nice job. Out of bounds hit by Mother McCauley. Attempt at a one set, it was hit long. Great. And Athy with the serve coming back. But they never come closer than two points since this game started. Oh, yeah, that's something that has, has rarely happened. We have hit from the back quarter and part of McCauley, and ball went out of bounds. It's usually Therese Boyle, but that time it was Deidre Connolly right. on that hit attempt. It's about the second time in the tournament we've seen her do that. Oh, nice serve. There's Schultz ready to hit it down, oh. but it's Boyle who does. Yes, indeed, and with authority. That's why they call her Thunder. I think something that's interesting to point out is that you've seen Sandberg huddle on almost every um, substitution. They're calling plays in the huddle. Macaulay calls plays as well, and one question that everybody wants to know is, does <laughs> Macaulay call plays on free ball? Yes, they do. Do any other teams in the state do that? 
I don't know of another team that does. Many coaches have been wondering about that all year. I guess we've been privy to some information here. Give away their secret. <laughs> Stopping it's the problem. Again, that play has been very successful to re for Therese Boyle, and now Deirdre Connolly has done it. She got a nice high set on the outside, went up in the air, and then just dinked over the block, put the ball down the line for a point. Colleen Dalton in again for Mother McCauley. Going out will be Andrea Delaney. Dalton will serve. And again, there you see Sandberg is huddling on the court. Again, they're calling the plays that Bonnie Beach was mentioning, and for their sake, hopefully successful. They're within a point right now. They're playing very tough against McCauley in the second game. Oh, oh, no. Gosh, that was a real error. I think when they set up on their serve receive, two players who were passing in the back row, um, Kathy Jacoby, just really kind of turned and looked at the ball, and neither player could decide who was going to pass it. Beautiful serve. Oh, another beautiful ace serve, but again, the ball was beautifully placed. Ball came right in at shoulder height. Interesting, they're going to bring Athy out for Sammer. Joanne Munch has decided to go with Thayer. Perhaps simply, perhaps they run a different defensive serve reception with her in there since she's not as quick. It's possible, except Athy was involved in both, both of the, the service receive errors over here. Maybe they just wanted a little change in feeling there. Kobe picks it up. Kobe picks it up. Oh, nice. Rita Schwartz right over the middle. McCauley keeps throwing a triple block in the middle. They haven't been tremendously successful for it with it. It's hard for the hitters to see when you've got three people up there, but it also opens up some places on the floor behind the block. Oh, what a serve by Kaczorowski. Super. Oh. Absolutely fantastic. She went to Deirdre Connolly with it and just couldn't be handled. Gutsy play because really at this point you want to make sure there's no service there and it came awfully close to the net. Oh. Deirdre Connolly came back with that after making an error and that's one of the things that McCauley will do to you over and over again is that they don't let the errors bother them. They're composed and they're confident and they'll come right back at you. Nice save by Maginot. Nice hit by Jacoby. We have a net foul on the part of McCauley. And so with the score, McCauley 13 and Sandberg 11, Sandberg gets the ball back. They're still alive and they're in there and fighting. And we see Lynette Trout, the up official, called the referee in volleyball. She's from Champaign. Nice serve. Gonna get a free ball here. Let's oh, see what one Sandberg of the few, few free balls that McCauley gives. Good pass by Thayer. Imagine on the set. Oh, oh. no. Too bad. Zumerchik got the set. It was a back set to Zumerchik. She was way behind the 10-foot line, which is where hitters usually want to establish their position, and she was late coming into the ball. Good pass by Jacoby. Again, ball to Boyle, and Boyle is such a good hitter. The block was there, and she decided to go ahead and hit into the block and did what's called a wipe off. She hit the ball into the block as hard as she could and then pushed it off out of bounds. Here's Deidre McConnelly to serve possible match point oh. on that side out. It's a breath of life to Carl Sandberg. A very, very small opening in a door that is about to slam shut. Nice serve by Zumerchik. We go to Boyle. The ball was really, on McCauley's part, wasn't really set very well, and Boyle was able to reach over and just push it into the blockers enough so that it caught between their, their hands and then the net and then their bodies. She's six feet tall, but she's extremely quick. Oh! oh. We have another service error at match point. This will very often happen, especially in a championship match at the high school level. Pressure is really there, and Kathy Jacoby to serve. It's game two. Mother McCauley won the first game, 15-9, and they're ahead 14-11 in the second game. Excellent block, Maginot and It really was. There. That was a good block. It was also interesting. McCauley is in their overload right now. They're in their overload to the left. Therese is passing in the left back position. She came all the way to the right forward position to hit that ball. She's really got to be moving. Now she's over on the left and running an X. Hit over the block. Ball to Maginot. Nice dig. Can we check on the set? Over to Kaczorowski. Cullen keeps, Mullen keeps it alive. Maginot on the hit. Oh, oh yes, yes. What a save. Oh, oh, too bad. 
That was really a very nice save. Super exchange between the two teams. Outstanding. The third hit Good. went to Maura Cullen, and she really was backwards in the backcourt now with 14-13. Oh. And pressure is tremendous. Now we have a service error and a side out on the part of Sandberg. The ball goes to McCauley. She tried for the ace serve and getting her at least deep enough to cause some difficulty in the past. Possible match point again for McCauley. Nice pass. And oh, there it is. is. That's good. One of your network sponsors is Country Companies Insurance. And we'll be back with the awards presentation. Bonnie, it's Bedlam on the court. Cries, hugs, emotion all around with this championship match. I think that's the, mo the most emotional I've seen Mother Macaulay. There are a lot of girls who are crying. I'm sure that they are just excited and they're happy. They've had a tremendous record and reputation to defend. This is really the first time that all season long that I've seen Therese Boyle crack a smile. <laughs> she is real pleased right now. She's not only smiling, she's crying. There's been a tremendous amount of pressure. There are five of the six seniors. They're not going to be back next year, but I'm sure their program isn't going to suffer one bit. We're going to have an awards presentation here with a fine thing that the IHSA does for their athletes, and it's really a moving experience. This program has been organized by Ola Bundy, who is one of the secretaries at the IHSA, and organized by her, and she's very, very proud of the effort that's gone into making this first trip to Springfield excellent. We invite you to direct your attention to the east end of Prairie Hamill Convention Center for the award ceremony for first and second place in this year's class AA Girls State Volleyball Tournament. Presiding for the presentation of awards on behalf of the Illinois High School Association is Dr. Joseph Sergio, principal of Steinmetz High School in Chicago okay. and president of the IHSA Board of Directors. Okay. Assisting Dr. Sergio will be okay. other members of the board and administrative staff. Dr. Sergio, if you please. Thank you. Good evening again, ladies and gentlemen. Those of us who have sat through 16 matches over the last three days really have seen one of the finest volleyball tournaments that's ever been conducted here or anywhere else. Those are very true words. It's just been an outstanding tournament. We couldn't ask for a better match than we just saw for first and second place. So we must congratulate both teams, as well as the other two teams earlier in the night for their achievement here during this three-day <coughs> tournament. To make the presentation to the second place team is uh, Miss Ola, Ola Bundy, who is Assistant Executive Secretary of the Illinois High School Association. She'll be assisted by Wayne Mendenhall, who is Athletic Coordinator of the Springfield Schools, and Mr. Charles Smith, Principal of Homewood Flossmoor School, Homewood Flossmoor High School, and also Secretary of the Illinois High School Association. Ola? It gives me real pleasure because of the achievement and effort of both teams in this match, which reflect the tremendous achievement and effort on behalf of the thousands of girls who participate in girls' volleyball throughout the state of Illinois. And now, on behalf of this tremendous effort on the part of the Sandberg Eagles from Orland Park, I'd like to ask for Coach Joanne Much to come forward. Joanne Much is an outstanding volleyball player herself, Joanne, and she's done a beautiful job of coaching. On behalf of your effort of 32 wins and seven losses, Class AA runner-up coach. Your call the names of your players. Congratulations, girls. I'm not supposed to say anything. Number one, Julie Maginot. Julie Maginot has had an outstanding tournament and a great season. Number six, Kathy Jacoby. Probably one of the most consistent players Number in the eight, tournament. Number eight, Ann Kaczorowskis. <laughs> Number seven, Judy Athey. Number three, Rita Schwartz. 
Rita really had some outstanding Number play 12, in the second Athena game. Number 12, Athena Callahan. Number 10, Cheryl Sixta. I can't see who that is. Number 9, Chris Mitchell. Number 14, Candy Thayer. Who just had probably her best match of the tournament. Number 15, Mary Lou Avolio. Number five, Mickey Cook. And number four, Patty Zumerchik. Patty Zumerchik has been an outstanding setter. Her hustle was just tremendous, and in a lot of situations, she kept that Sandberg team together. Ola Bundy has really done a very, very super job well, putting this tournament Sandberg, together. Please come forward. The 1981 State Volleyball. Presenting the medallions to the first place team. Ms. Is Mrs. Sherry Coomer, who's on the faculty of Springfield Lanphier High School, and uh, also the tournament manager who organized this entire spectacle for us. And I think she deserves another great big hand for the wonderful tournament we have. Both Ola Bundy and the tournament manager deserve a great deal of credit. They have put on a fantastic tournament, great facilities. It's been very Following classy. the presentation of the medals, Mr. Charles Smith will present the trophy. And I ask the coach, Marianne Malone, to come up here, Marianne. <laughs> Your team record, a 40 and 0 is a really a fantastic mark. Congratulations. Will you call the names of your brothers? Number 11, Captain Sharon Kuchang. Number 8, Sheila Nidecki. Number 12, Jean Rowan. Number 15, Deirdre Conley. Number 27, Colleen Dalton. Number 13, Maura Cullen. Number 10, Lori Carraher. Number 1, Eva Murray. Number 7, Ann Nelan. Number three, Andrea Delaney. Number two, Kathy Burns. Number five, True Spoil. We have the captains from Mother Macaulay. Present to you the 1981 Girls Volleyball Double A Champion. Electricity here in the gym here in Springfield has been outstanding, Bonnie. It's everything you expect, the crying, the emotion. we got a champion here in Illinois. It really is, and for a repeating champion, it was almost as if the victory were sweeter this time. It was just beautiful. It was Therese Boyle's first tournament championship as a player. She was very sick last year. She was absolutely outstanding. Mother Macaulay's had the pressure all year long. They've been the expected champion. They've done everything that's been asked them, and, and they've come through in the end with that win. And undefeated for two years straight, defending champions, and five of the girls are seniors. Five. 
It's got to be a tremendous record to try and, and protect and to try and get up and play every time, and they have. They've only lost one game, and that was to Maine West at the opening match of this tournament. They've just done an outstanding job, Ann. You, you just can't say enough about them. Mother McCauley, we've talked so much about them, but we certainly can't detract from the performance of Carl Samber. They're an outstanding team. They're well coached by Joanne Mutt. She's one of the leading volleyball coaches here in Illinois, and she's got some tremendous players in the Carl Sandberg team. A couple of them we need to mention. We really do. Julie Maginot has done just an absolutely super job. I think that, that Patty Zumerchik, one of the setters on the Sandberg team, she's just the hustle and the desire and the drive that she's had in holding the team together. Rita Schwartz really came on strong in the second game for serving. Candy Thayer, their big middle blocker, probably had her best match and, and definitely her best game in, in the second game. It's been outstanding. I really thought that it was going to be a third game in this match, but Mother McCauley did remain champions with two games. And we're going to be back to talk to the coaches right after this message from DeKalb Ag Research. With us is Coach Joanne Much of the Carl Sandberg team, finished second tonight in the double A match. She's been a smiling coach talking with us before this because I think she's very proud of her team. Thank you very much. Yes, I am. I felt we played McCauley a real fine match. I thought we fought for every point. We happened to make some key errors in passing and not converting on a couple free balls, but for the most part, we played really well and we never quit once. Sandberg, as coach, you had, a, I know, a game plan that you wanted to execute. Were you able to do exactly what you wanted to do? We thought we'd really concentrate on passing the ball for the most part. And um, after that, we, we knew what some of the players would do. We were trying to establish all of our hitting positions. Um, we weren't necessarily keying in on Therese Boyle. We knew that Therese is going to get some good <laughs> hits, so we just thought we'd go with that. Bonnie, I know you made a number of observations you'd like to talk to Joanne about. Um, Joanne, one of the things I'd like to ask you is that teams that have been successful, your team included, against McCauley, a lot of times have gone down the line in McCauley or soft shots into the middle or shots deep into the court. You used soft shots into the middle. You got them on the line a couple of times with both hits and dinks. Um, how, how did you feel? Did you feel that that was something that you had to do as well? Well, some of that is in terms of, your, of uh, the set that you get from your setter. If we get a real tight set, we, we know that we have a couple alternatives that we have to go to. Some of that too is determined by the girl's body position. If she doesn't have the greatest body position maybe to make a power hit, she'll go with maybe something a little softer. Right. But was that something that you talked to your players about? Um, did, you feel, did you feel as a coach against McCauley that those were places in which McCauley was vulnerable? Oh, we knew, we knew we had to force them to play defense and we knew their middle was open. Those are shots I teach my players throughout the season and hopefully they keep, get that in a part of their selection. We mentioned in the show, Joanne, that you also personally are an excellent volleyball player. <laughs> so it's, it's really nice to be able to coach from that standpoint, isn't it, to know the inside of the game as well. I think a lot of times being a player that really helps give you a feel for the game, something that maybe some other coaches don't have. Right. Just a little extra added something, I think, a feel for it. Um, Do you think that, that it's helped your team a lot and, and helped McCauley, too, that many of the players play together open ball on the same team, do they not? Some of your players play with some of the players Some of my players did, did throughout the season. It just helps that the kids play all year round, maybe not necessarily with McCauley, but I felt I felt that that was an extra added advantage for us in that, that they were teammates and it gave McCauley something to doubt. I would guess so too because then they knew what you were capable of doing. Well, I, you know, I didn't think that McCauley would take us lightly for that factor. No, I'm sure that they didn't. How did you feel about Maginot's play? I, I personally happen to feel that she probably has one of the fastest arm swings of, of any she hitter really in does. Illinois. She's beautiful. She's really fun to watch and, and you know, she was a transfer student into Sandberg. And, um, I tell you that you don't get a package like that left on your doorstep very often. <laughs> no, and you... she's just a pleasure to coach, and I think she's really fun to watch. There's quite a few players that are fun to watch, and I think she happens to be one of them. Speaking of packages on doorsteps, I think we have two of your players, if we could bring them in and, and talk with them. Joanne, would you like to introduce these two young ladies who oh. put on such a fine demonstration tonight? Okay, uh, number three with the flowers, that's um, one of my co-captains, Rita Schwartz, and number one here is uh, Julie Maginot, another co-captain. Read exactly what are those flowers for? Are there any special significance? Um, it's my last game and <laughs> no. <laughs> you all played such a tremendous match, you know, you're seniors and it's so hard. I think more than losing, it's almost the fact that this is the end of the of the line for you all as high school. Yeah, well I think uh, it's been a great experience, you know, like the whole the whole high school season, it really you know, I, I can't replace it at all. I, I have a great coach and it's a great bunch of girls and a great I, team. I 
we were all it together. It could have gone either way tonight, and I'm really, I'm really proud of everyone. You had a little bit of difficulty with communication early in, in the tournament. You had some dif some difficulty with Belleville Alta, but tonight you really seem to be up. Um, I think the main factor was just getting used to the place. It's a real big place and, you know, the court and the fans and things like that. But I think we adjusted well and I think we really played well. Rita, is there anything that you would like to have done perhaps strategy-wise that you were not able to execute upon? Um, our service reception. Particularly right there when you had a chance to bring it up, be the tie or win that, that second ball game. Is that adrenaline or is it just something that happens? Something that happens. I think it could have gone either way. I thought we had a great game. Bonnie, anything you'd like to ask these two young ladies? Yes, you really played them very close at the end of the second game. They had uh, two service errors on match point. It really allowed you, your team to get in, and you made a point and brought the game up to, to 13 point, 14 at one point. Did you really think that at that point you had a great chance of, of bringing them to a third game? Oh, for sure. I thought I thought definitely could have gone either way. It was uh, just a matter of who was going to execute and who wasn't going to make that mistake. And I don't know. I I think that we we really started playing well at the key time, and you know, is knowing each other way, well so well. I mean, you know the Macaulay players so well. Does that have any bearing on how you play? Uh, I don't think it has any bearing on how I play, but it will tonight. <laughs> 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 Both these players are so outstanding, and you brought so much excitement to all the volleyball fans throughout the state to, today and, and throughout the year. And I know that your hometown crowd is so proud of you and the girls and the effort that you've brought about. How many girls are going to return next year? Oh, let me count. Well, about six. Well, Bonnie, these young ladies are fantastic, and, and we're going to be looking forward to possibly seeing a retreat, return trip down here for them. And, and is there anything you'd like to say to Joanne before we leave them? I just want to congratulate Joanne, and I really feel that Joanne deserves a tremendous amount of credit. I think that she is one of the brightest coaches in Illinois. She's really brought a very exciting dimension to the state tournament, and it was great to see her down here for a second time. She did a beautiful job of coaching and has every reason to be proud, and number two is a beautiful position, and I know about 400 teams that would like to be sitting right there. How about it? Joanne Much. Rita Schwartz, Julie Maginot, thank you so much for an outstanding final match. We're going to be back to talk to Ann Malone with her championship team, Mother Macaulay. Coach Ann Malone, most people would give their eye teeth for a state championship. You've got two. What are you going to do for an encore? Oh, I don't know. We're going to work real hard and try and get a third one, I guess. For a three-year coaching career, your record has only one loss in it, and you've had 72 straight since that point, 35 last year and 40 this year. I, make, I wasn't adding too well, but that's 75. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's quite a record. I know we've been talking about this team all throughout the year. You've had a lot mm -hmm. of pressure on you, and you've come through and again garnered the state championship. Did they feel the pressure coming into this tournament? Well, maybe a little bit. Um, let's see, we played, I think, four of the teams that were already down here a couple right. times this year. So, you know, we knew how they played. They knew how we played. You know, you have to adjust to that, too. So, yeah, there was a little pressure on the kids. There yeah. always is a state tournament. There has to be pressure. <laughs> that's true. Boy. I think one of the things that, that everybody has really talked about is when you start a winning streak that is as long as your winning streak is, I think on the part of some players there's a tendency to, to protect that win record almost more than anything else. Did you find that that was a difficulty with your team or not? No, not really. Unfortunately, a lot of the teams we played this year just don't play real tough volleyball. So we were able to get everyone in. You know, Sometimes our, uh, in the second game we always put our subs in and they would have less points scored against them than the starters would. So it's, you know, it depends. Each game is different. You have to go into it like that. A lot have been said is about the complexity of your offense. I understand you run quite a number of plays and also call them on free balls. That's very yeah, rare here yeah. in high school ball. Well, it's, it's a little easier to call plays on free balls because there's no real attack on it. The ball is just coming over. You have a lot of time to set your offense up to, you know, our setters. We really let our setters have a lot of control out there. They're the quarterbacks for us. So we just, you know, give them full control. They can figure out more what's going on out there than we can, really. You know, they're out there. They, they had the feel of the game. I think it's a real advantage for it. Uh, your team insofar as they've been together for a long time. Do you find that there are a lot of volleyball teams have trouble with communication. How do yeah. you find the communication is on your team? Well, it's good. Our, see, our, we have two sophomores and the rest are juniors and seniors on our team and their average playing time is seven years. Now they haven't all played on the same team together, pretty much the same club and school, you know, grade school and then right. into high school and then their open ball team. So they know the way, you know, they know how each other, each other plays. They know how to play around them and they play well together. They've been playing together a lot, and we're going to get a chance to talk to them right here as we bring in a couple of those players from the state championship team. I believe you brought in Sharon Kuchin, who's the setter for you, and, of course, all everything Therese Boyle. <laughs> all everything. 
<laughs> Bonnie, you've been talking a lot about these players. We've had a chance to be repetitive because of their tremendous play. Um, girls, we were talking to your coach about the, the pressure that Macaulay has had. How did you feel about it? Did you think about the pressure or was it just that you wanted to stay championship and you were out to get it? How, how did you feel about that? Um, we knew we were under pressure, but there's no way that was going to stop us. We, we wanted it too bad. It was ours all the way. You didn't feel caught up in protecting your win-loss record. You just wanted the state championship, and that was that. Mm -hmm. Teresa, you didn't get a chance to play in the championship match no. last year, did you? No, I didn't. No. How did you feel about playing this time? I had to play. There was no, nothing was going to stop me this year. No broken way. leg, broken arm. You were going to be <laughs> right there, right? right? There. <laughs> yep. Did you, yeah. did you find that it was ex as exciting as you thought? Yeah. Well, last year I, I was on the bench, but I felt I was just as involved. I was. Well, you certainly had a great deal to do with your team getting as far as they did. Yeah, yeah. everyone does on our team. We have a great team. Yeah, it's but not only me. <laughs> no, it's not only you. You have a really beautiful team. Sharon, you've had a lot to do with um, Therese being so mm -hmm. successful, her being able to thunder on the ball. <laughs> That's her nickname, Thunder. <laughs> That's what we heard. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do without her. <laughs> Really, it's such a nice combination of players, and you all work so very well together. Did you did you have certain things in mind tonight as you played against Sandberg? Certain things that you talked about, game plan. Yeah. Oh yeah, we always do, you know that. But we just played our game. What what kinds of things did you want to do against Sandberg? Did you think you had to do in order to win? Um, we thought that right away we'd had to score points against them, for, and we did that. Cause last time we played, and that's what we did, and we just kept going. Nothing stopped us last time. That sounds Keep good. On. Get, those points. get right in there. You had a little bit of trouble with Maine West, who played probably just an outstanding match against you. It's the best match I've seen against you in a long time. Um, what happened in, on that morning? Um, mostly I tired, I think. We didn't get much sleep the night before. We were just too nervous, I think, and they played great. They really did. Yeah. They, were good too. they really did. I think they had a, a game plan that was designed specifically for you, and, and they really executed it very well. Yes, it did work. And back to you. Ladies, we'd like to congratulate you once again on a tremendous back-to-back -back championships. Therese Boyle, Sharon Kuchin, I'm sorry about that, and Coach Ann Malone. Congratulations, ladies, and best wishes for continued success in the future thank to you thank all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. Thank you. Well, Bonnie, there we go. They're our state champions, and they're excited. They're a little bit shaky, and I think it's just finally setting in what's exactly happened. And I don't think a state could ask for a better state championship team. I think that team could compete with any team in the nation, including teams from California, Texas, anywhere. They have just been absolutely beautiful, and what a fitting end to a, a short but a very beautiful season. 75 games in a row, two state championships, and more coming up from that fifth grade elementary school that comes all the way through. Coach Ann Malone's had a fairy tale coaching career, and I'm sure it's going to continue. And Therese Boyle and Sharon Kuchin and five of those, three of those other seniors, I'm sure we're going to see go on in college and be devastating factors wherever they go. Illinois high school basketball has been in its finest. Double A has just put on a show that, that we can just be so excited with. What do you see as the, what's really made the big difference and why the Midwest is so Illinois based? I think there's been a very strong volleyball program in the Chicago area, really due to the Chicago Park District and the Chicago Women's Volleyball Association for many, many years before volleyball was even a, a big sport. And then after that, it, it just kind of grew. And, and Ola Bundy, I think, has been extremely instrumental in helping to develop a good, solid statewide volleyball program in Illinois. And it just it's just taken off. And you can see that that the younger kids have learned from the older kids and, and they've really grown and every year the team that plays in the state championship is better than the year before. It gets more complicated, it gets faster, the defense is better, it's just really exciting. For the 1981 state championship, AA high school volleyball championship, I'm Ann Penstone with Bonnie Beach and while we have a chance I'd like to give credit to the production personnel that have made this telecast possible. Executive producer Joe Pate, producer Bob Caldwell, it's been directed by Jerry Wheatley with assistant director Scott Morris, cameras by Steve Bull, John Wamsley, Doug Wilson, and Kathy Wilson, audio by Frank Lilly, video replay Jim Wilson, video engineering John Zuber, graphics Jan Morrow, and stats Tom Stevens. Thank you and goodbye, and we hope to see you back here next year. You've been watching another Illinois High School Association championship event. Your network hosts have been the Stoffer Chemical Company.
DeKalb Bank Research and the more than 750 local DeKalb dealers supplying Illinois farmers with quality hybrid seed. And Country Companies Insurance and the nearly 1,000 Country Companies agents in the state of Illinois.